Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is Lilo Siegel. In case if you haven't seen any of my videos, you should definitely click into my channel and watch all of them because I always have some very, very special sewing ideas for you. In this video today, I'd like to show you how you can make for yourself some real nice, sexy party summer leggings. You can see them on me here right now. All you need is a pattern for leggings, is a material that is stretchy, that has, has a lot of elastan in it, and you need some ribbon, or you need a material where you can make this ribbon yourself out of it. How you can do this, I explain exactly, step by step in this video. So you interested? Did I get you nosy? Then let's stay tuned and follow me in this video. Here we go. To do these leggings, as you've just seen in the beginning of my film, you will have to have a leggings or a jeggings pattern. Now, if you look at your pattern exactly, you will find that your front part of the actual leg is a little bit smaller than the back part of the leg. This is on any kind of trousers the case and is only normal. But we're not going by this line that you might have on your pattern. But you take your pattern and fold it exactly along the edge of the leg. That this line is together, fold it exactly in half. As you can see, i am already marked myself my middle of my trousers. Because I want these parts to be even, equal and not the front smaller than the back because this is my front trousers and this is my back part. Now just mark this and now it is important that you measure from these parts on downward on your pattern how far you want to go down to now cut out the part that we will need for our new pattern. I for my trousers decided on 25 centimeters and this is on this small pattern that I got here, approximately there. So from the mark I got right here, which I marked on my front trouser part, I will draw a right angle to my middle of the trousers from my mark that I've done there. Because this is more or less the part which I will cut out. But now exactly in the middle of this new part, I will slightly, let's say, two centimeters on your pattern. I will go upwards to get a slight bend into this cutout because I wouldn't like to have it just straight across, which of course you can also do. Now on this particular pattern, as you see it here, which should be, as you believe, my, my main pattern already, which I got lying underneath here, I got all my seam allowances everywhere all the way around added already. Usually I write this on my pattern so I never forget if my pattern is with or without the seam allowances. So I, as I just mentioned I got everywhere my seam allowance and this should be the finished lines of the part I'm cutting out. I make it easy for myself. Now before I cut it out I will add in this part already my seam allowance from one centimeter, which I always suggest to do. Here I don't need to worry about, there was my seam allowance, yes, but as this part is falling out, we don't need to worry about it. This will come later automatically with the seam allowance that I got on here already and with the particular part we will have to cut to finish the edges off really nice. Now you can see I cut my part out already which I had drawn along this edge and I took a new piece of paper put it underneath and as I mentioned before this is already my seam allowance here I just copied this edge on this new piece of paper for me went all the way to here made a little mark here and made a mark across here so I know this, these are my end edges. Now I take my cutout piece again, put it exactly in position 
and draw another line along my cutting edge right here because you remember this would usually be stitched onto here with our seam allowance. So this is exactly the following actually also of this side which we need here. So you can see when I take this away now you see this inner side which we just did the drawing of. This is not necessary here because this will be now the part we will need to do a proper nice edge of finishing for my trousers here. It's the interfacing where also the buttonholes will take place later to draw our nice material through which we will have to do this particular pair of trousers. And from this edge, depending on where you want to put the buttonholes later, I suggest you cut a four centimeter wide piece. That means from your original edge, now you add all the way around four centimeters and cut this part out. So let me just show you the parts again which you will need to do your trousers. Of course, you got the main trouser part which you need as a pair. And don't forget to write the front and the back on for you so you don't mess that up. And the same with this part. You will need a pair of this and maybe make yourself a little mark that you know this was your front that you do not swap them by accident over or around. As well on this particular interface we can maybe iron another flizzelina, another interface against it which will strengthen the buttonholes which we have to put in and you can already decide exactly in which positions you like to put your buttonholes, measure it out and mark them exactly in the positions where you would like to put them later. And one more little hint, as this part always takes a lot of material when you have something like that, as that one is not shown as it will be later on underneath the trousers, you can of course cut this as an example here in half and put a seam right there. But be sure then to make it all in the right fitting. But then you can put these parts easy and tight together and save a lot of material when you do this on this particular part. So I've prepared my pattern already. I'm practically finished with it. So I will cut my pieces now. And of course, by the way, depending on which kind of legging pattern you're using at the moment, you have to consider do you put an extra belt on the top or are your trousers cut so high already that you will just flap them over on the top and put a rubber band in the top end for your waist. So let me prepare the next steps and we will continue. I will now mainly explain the sewing to you on the pattern. Reason is I got this black material here and you will hardly not see anything if I show you this and explain it. So here you can see it much better. First of all, when you got your pattern done, this one we don't need anymore, you've got your two legs and you've got your facing cut. And remember, you can put a slight interfacing also on your facing because it will keep the buttonholes firm and it's better to sew as well. So first thing you need to stitch up this little inside seam in your trousers. That means you take your parts, this is your front, this is where your loops will go, and you just stitch this little part up the centimeter seam allowance that you might have. Then you take your facing, put right side on top of right side of your trouser part, and stitch it all the way from there to there down, if possible, so also not wider than one centimeter width. When you've done that, you can put little cut ends into the corners, then turn the facing towards the inside and stitch it down. Now I showed to you how I've done it here already and you will see right away, it's not so easy to see, 
This is my seam that you can see right here. So I closed the seam, I went over with my overlock, then I took my facing, stitched it all the way around, having right side lying on top of right side. Then I turned it towards the inside, stitched over the edge while it was open, and then stitched on two centimeters all the way along here. So this is my finished edge. I turn this over for you like this, because here now I have to mark exactly where I want my buttonholes. This is the curve here on the top. That's that curve. Yeah. So I do this to both of my legs, prepare it like this, and put my buttonholes in. And as I mentioned to you earlier on, cut your facing about 4 cm wide. This is very good for the sewing, this width to work with. And you can see now I still got a bit of material left over here. Well, that's no problem. I will just cut that off a little bit, I trim it off, so I only got about a three quarters of a centimeter left inside and it's really tight and cleaned up inside. But you see on the plaque it's so difficult to see what I'm explaining to you. That's why I showed it mainly to you with a pattern piece. So as soon as you done your whole edge here with your facing, you, you turned it towards the inside and stitched it over as you can see right here the way I've done it. Then you have to decide how and where to put your buttonholes. To explain to you what I've done, I've put two buttonholes in this top position here and put another five in the same distance down on both sides. Then I also just done my seam by folding it over one centimeter on my trousers as you can see right here. And now it's time to do your big loop, which you need to guide it through the trousers. Now, it all depends on how many buttonholes you will put in. It also depends on where did you start at your curve. As you know, I'm above my knee, but maybe you only want to do it from underneath your knee. Then you need much less of this. With other words, as soon as you got your trousers more or less finished repaired with the buttonholes here, you have to work it out, maybe with a rope or with a ribbon, how you want to guide it through the buttonholes, so how much the lengths you will need. Well, believe it or not, on my lengths, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it myself. I needed to cut 3 meter 20 long this particular satin loop that I got here. I cut it 8 centimeters wide only towards the ends, but while well, I got three parts here, as you can imagine, because your material is maybe 1 meter 20 or 1 meter 40 wide. So if you cut it that way across, you need to add, no question. So in the whole area here, I cut 8 centimeter widths to have a finished width of 3, but just towards the end, on approximately the last 30 centimeters, 40 centimeters, I've gone a touch wider. So at the end here, I had 12 centimeters my cutting and I kind of looped it off here at the end to not have just a straight edge for the ending. So my finished width here at the ends is approximately 5 centimeters while the whole rest is 3 centimeters finished width. Now you can decide how you will loop them in. I started doing it by the top. And on the top, in the middle of my rope, of my ribbon, I put a couple of stitches underneath in that position. So this will always stay in position as I got it here. Because I don't want to start fiddling with it each time I put the trousers on again. And I don't know where is the middle to get to the button correctly down there. And then you start putting it through the loops the way you want. Now one important other thing is, don't make them too long. Have your trousers, when they're finished, off on the bottom, only to go about to your ankle. Because this loop also got to be about 6-7 centimeters above the finished bottom. So when you do this bow here, 
you don't want it to fall down to the floor. It's still got to stay on your shoes and finish somewhere where your high heel is starting. But that is all something you have to work out. Otherwise, you always have the possibility of shortening it in case if you made it too long. Well, I believe I told you everything about the trousers that I made here. So I hope you're going to like this video and, of course, the trousers very much. And maybe you like to make some leggings like that for yourself. And if you do so, I wish you much success. And I kindly like to ask you, stay healthy, keep on watching my channel. And I promise I'll be back again for some other videos for you in your language, even if it is not my language. And sometimes I might say some things that are not quite correct in your language. So please forgive me. As I said before, stay healthy, stay tuned, and I say goodbye for now from Germany, yours, Lilo.